$528.38. That's how much I owe on my 2016 Street Glide Special. Let's go get that taken care of. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the 2022 Street Glide Special versus the Street Glide ST. Knowing I was about to pay off my ride, I've been wondering if Harley Davidson was going to come out with anything in 2022 that would make it worth it to convince me to upgrade from my 2016. So we'll talk about that also. Hi, I'm Mike and welcome to my channel. Harley Davidson just revealed the all new 2022 models. And among them were two new ST models for the touring platform, the Street Glide ST and the Road Glide ST. I'm going to be comparing the Street Glide Special to the Street Glide ST today. And if you're considering a Street Glide, maybe this will help you understand which of these two models might be best for you. I am not going to be specifically looking at the Road Glide, but generally the Road Glide and the Street Glides are very comparable in features. It's just a different fairing. So I think most of these talking points will cross over to the Road Glide as well. One, dimensions. According to the spec sheet, the ST model is a full inch shorter than the Special. The ST is also a half inch taller overall and at the seat. Ground clearance is 0.4 inches higher on the ST model as well. The tires and the wheels are exactly the same size. The ST does come with a different engine and saddlebags, so those could be part of the reason the ST is 13 pounds lighter in running order. 2. Engine The all-new performance-oriented ST model comes with the Milwaukee 8 117 engine, which has a claimed 106 horsepower and 127 foot-pounds of torque. The Special comes equipped with the Milwaukee 8 114, which has a claimed 97 horsepower and 118 foot-pounds of torque. The 117 engine in the ST model was previously only available on CBO models before 2022. Starting in 2022, you get this engine on the Lowrider, the Lowrider ST, the Street Glide ST, the Road Glide ST, and of course, the CBO model still. 3. Chassis There was some confusion about the suspension on the Touring ST model right after the launch. Harley mentioned Olin suspension in the launch video, and those shocks are available from this model from Harley Davidson, but they are not standard equipment on the ST model. The ST model does get a standard height rear shock where the Special has a low height shock. This explains the higher dimensions, including the higher seat height. If you're not familiar with Harley Davidson's stock shocks, the low height shock only has 2.1 inches of travel. The stock height shock is one inch taller and has three inches of travel. This may not seem like a lot, but when you're starting with two inches and gaining another inch, that's actually a pretty big deal. Personally, I was hoping that the ST would come with a more premium suspension package. As far as I can tell or find, there are no other differences between the ST and the Specials in regards to suspension, brakes, wheels, tire sizes, or anything else chassis related. Four, tech. The tech is the same for both models, same radio, gauges, LED lighting, charging system. I thought the ST might get the RDRS for cornering ABS or something like that since it's marketed as a performance option, but that is still a $1,000 upgrade for both models. Colors and trim. The ST model only has two color options, which are vivid black and gunship gray, which adds $575 to the price over the black. The Special has 10 options when you consider color and trim combinations. The ST model only has black finishes, where the Special does offer chrome for those that are not into the blacked out look. Just a note, the black trim usually adds $930, and the color options start at $575 on the Special as well. So let's talk about the price. 5. Price To try and compare apples to apples, let's compare the Vivid Black ST to the Special in Vivid Black with black finishes. The Street Glide Special in Vivid Black with black finish is $28,379 before setup, freight, or surcharges. The Vivid Black ST is $29,999. So in the end, it's about $1,600 more than the Special. For the $1,600, you get a standard height shock with the Milwaukee 8 117 cubic inch engine. Oh, and you get standard height saddlebags instead of the extended saddlebags. Now to be honest, I would say the engine is worth the $1,600 upgrade. My stage one upgrade cost me about $1,600 several years ago. 
Now, to be fair, my stage one was a complete exhaust change, including a header pipe with no cat, and my bike was dyno-tuned. I didn't go with one of these tuners where you do it yourself. I'm personally a huge fan of dyno tuning, probably because I have a friend that has a dyno tuner and I've seen the kind of results he can get on the dyno. And I've seen people's reactions that had tuners first and then had him tune their bike on the dyno. I've never had anyone get the bike tuned by him and not see a gain regardless of what tuner they were using before. If you really care about engine performance and you're okay with black finishes and the color options on the ST, then I'd say go for the ST because you now have a higher baseline to start building that performance bike from for only $1,600 more. Now, if you want colors other than Gunship Gray or Vivid Black, or if you want chrome finishes, then I would go with the Special. For $1,600, I bet you can get a Stage 1 kit that's going to bring that performance close to the 117 stock numbers, or maybe even beat it. For less than 400 bucks, you can get a set of aftermarket standard height shocks from a company like Progressive, and they're probably better than the stock Harley standard height shock to begin with. Now that we've compared these two bikes, and we know what the differences are, let's look at it and see if it makes sense for someone like me to consider upgrading. I have a 16 Street Glide with a Stage 1 Performance Kit on it already. So does it make sense for me to upgrade? Well, I don't think so. Let's talk about why. The stock 117 on a dyno puts out 94 horse and 112 foot-pounds of torque. My 103 with my Stage 1 on a dyno puts out almost 92 horsepower and around 114 or 15 foot-pounds of torque. Now, I'm happy with those numbers, and if I wasn't, I could still do a cam upgrade. I'm not looking for Stage 3 or Stage 4 performance numbers. The only real advantage I see to the ST model is engine performance. So if I'm not going to chase those high-end horsepower and torque numbers, then I really see no advantage for me to upgrade. I've already done things to my bike like put LED lighting on, bars, sound system upgrade. Sure, I could move some of those parts off and put them on a new bike, but it just doesn't seem like it's worth it to me, especially knowing that my bike is now paid off and I just got out of a $300 a month bike payment. Now to be fair, my 16 Street Glide does not have as good a front suspension as the new models, but I could spend $1,000 or $2,000 and do a complete suspension upgrade kit front and back and have a better performing machine than I think I would have from an ST factory. Now don't take this the wrong way. I'm not saying the ST is bad or that the Special is bad. I'm just saying what's different in them, trying to help you figure out which one makes more sense for you based on what you care about and if it makes sense for someone like me to upgrade. And then for me and for the value, I don't have that kind of extra cash just laying around, so I'm not going to upgrade. If I didn't have a bagger and I was looking to buy a bagger, then I would probably jump to the ST model. The extended saddlebags don't mean that much to me. The only thing is, I do like the chrome options for the engine. If you guys like this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you do that YouTube thing, check out the content on my channel. And if you dig it, hit that subscribe button down below. Don't forget to ring that bell to be notified the next time I drop a new video. And as always, guys, thank you for your support. Stay safe and keep on riding.